This video is a basic overview of job safety analysis process. We will cover the what, why, when, where, and how of JSAs with a very brief explanation of the hierarchy of controls. Let's get started. What is a JSA? According to Harvard University, a job safety analysis, JSA, is a safety tool that can be used to define and control hazards associated with a certain process, job, or procedure. It is a systematic examination and documentation of every task within each job to identify health and safety hazards and the steps to control each task. Why do a JSA? There are quite a few benefits associated with JSAs. The JSA process can serve as a tool for planning, training new employees, or as a refresher when doing infrequent jobs. It is also possible for the JSA to be used to determine contributing factors and root causes during an incident investigation, but that's another video. When to do a JSA. It is recommended that a JSA is conducted whenever one or the more following occurs. A fatality, based on accident trends, a new procedure or a new job, or when a new piece of equipment is being introduced that has a hazard associated with it. Where do you keep a JSA? When a job safety analysis is completed, it should be placed in the work area where the task will be performed or made available to the affected employees. Affected employees and their supervisor should review the JSA before work begins, especially for complex jobs or work performed infrequently. The supervisor and employees performing the work should check the tasks, hazards, and controls for accuracy, and the JSA should be updated as necessary. A JSA may also be used to teach employees how to recognize hazards and the processes used for the job. How to do a JSA? The JSA process is broken down into three steps. Breaking the job into steps, identifying the hazards associated with each step, and identifying the controls. Use the hierarchy of controls when identifying hazards. Step one, select the job. The JSA should be completed by the supervisor and the people doing the work. They are the people most familiar with the hazards. A safety professional may help identify hazards and controls, but the supervisor and employees performing the work are most qualified to complete the JSA. Break the selected job down into tasks or broad steps. You don't want to be too specific or too general. Each step should be an action, remove, open, lift, climb, etc. In our example, we are hanging drywall. Notice the steps are not too granular, but not too vague either. Step two, identify the hazard. For each step, identify any hazards that have the potential to cause an incident, injury, environmental impact, or property damage. For instance, the task is to remove the manhole cover. The associated hazards would be strains and sprains from lifting, crushed by the cover if it, the lid falls, falling into the manholes as the cover is being removed, etc. In the example, we identify one or more hazards per step. Again, a couple of words to describe the hazard is all that is needed. Some of the hazards identified are strains and sprains from lifting and moving drywall, electrocution from cords and tools, lacerations, and falling from ladders when screwing off the top of the sheets. Step three, select the controls. For each hazard, apply the hierarchy of controls to reduce the hazard to an acceptable risk level, meaning a level that if something happens, no one will die or be seriously injured. As an example, to control sprains and sprains, use a mechanical lifting, a mechanical lifting device. Require multiple people to lift anything over 25 pounds, use proper lifting techniques, crush by wear steel toe boots, keep anyone not associated with the work out of the area, etc. In our example, we discuss how to plan to control the hazards associated with hanging drywall. Stretching before we start and throughout the day will help combat strains and sprains. Inspecting our tools and equipment will help to prevent electrocution. Working in a two-person team helps when lifting the drywall and holding the sheet in place to screw it off. Because we are working with a blade and sharp edges, cut-resistant gloves will protect our hands. Finally, 
we know we will need to screw off the tops of the sheet. We initially talked about using a ladder, but thought a baker utility scaffold would be a safer after discussion. Before we go, we need to cover a few things about the hierarchy of controls. Safety controls may be broken into five stages, elimination, substitution, engineering, administration, and personal protective equipment, PPE. The elimination stage is concerned with physically eliminating the hazard. Engineering controls isolate people from hazards, while substitution replaces hazards with a less hazardous process or substance. The purpose of the administrative control is to change how people work. Finally, personal protective equipment, PPE, is worn to minimize exposure to hazards that may lead to serious workplace injuries or illnesses. PPE is the least effective control and should always be used with administrative controls. Test your knowledge by visiting ToddJeromeJenkins.com and taking the JSA quiz. Click on the link below in the description. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment below if you found this useful or have any questions. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up. If you didn't, hit the thumbs down. Subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when I post new content. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.